Enable notifications by ringing the bell. So earlier we were talking about the KSI and Logan Paul uh, situation, to say the least. Um, rumor has it they're going to have a boxing match and then a UFC fight, or an MMA fight. Shouldn't just say UFC because UFC is not MMA. MMA is MMA. But um, there's no doubt that the UFC is the biggest name in mixed martial arts. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, I, I have, I've heard of like other promote like... Bellator, I'd say, is like the other one that's pretty big out there, and then also Ryzen, which is kind of like the the one that's coming up big in Japan right now. But um, I will definitely say that UFC is like where a lot of people are, like a lot of people consider to be like the top of the game. Which uh, I I recently went and watched a UFC 225, which was a pretty good event. Um, Mostly, mostly, most of the fights were pretty underwhelming, uh, but the last fight was, huh, the main event was, you know, it delivered on a lot of levels. Uh, the first fight was between, was uh, CM Punk, the wrestler, mm -hmm. uh, going up against Mike Jackson, and the fight was so bad, Dana White actually, I believe, has fired both of them now because wow. of how bad it was. Huh. Um, he may have just fired Mike Jackson, but I'm not sure, not 100% sure. Oh God, I ain't gonna even bother with that. Just got just got a message from somebody. I don't I don't even want to look at that. But um, anyway, <laughs> uh, the UFC uh, the uh, well anyway the final match tonight was was the middleweight title fight between uh, between Yoel Romero and uh, Robert Whitaker. Uh, Yoel Romero is a scary scary uh, Cuban guy who is like he's forty one years old but yet. Doesn't look a day over 30. Wow. And he is ridiculously athletic. I mean, just... It, you know you hear stories about, like, people who are just so ridiculously athletic that they could go into anything, like, literally anything, and be successful. That's Yoel Romero. Guy's a, sil guy's a former sil silver medalist at the Olympics, defected from Cuba, I believe, in, like, the mid, uh, mid to late 2000s, hmm. and decided to take up uh, MMA, and is now considered by many to be, like the best, like, like the best middleweight in the world. And, uh, he has a very distinct way of talking. He sounds like he smoked about 50, like, 50,000 Cuban cigars in his life. He He's like, I don't understand. I love you. I love you. That's, that's how he talks. Okay. And then he went up against Robert Whitaker, who is literally, uh, he's literally Crocodile Dundee. Like, he, the one guy he knocked out on his way to the title fight was literally uh, his his nickname was the alligator, or the the crocodile. He was literally called the crocodile, and he, he was they called him Killer Croc, and uh, Robert Whitaker knocked him out, <laughs> knocked him silly, and they and the memes started showing up with he was like, "Now nah, that's not a knife. This is a knife." <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and Robert Whitaker loved it. He's like he's like I can't believe they they actually made me with it. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, could be. Being compared to Paul Hogan, I mean that's pretty bloody cool, but it was a good fight, and um, I believe it should have been a, I believe it should have been a draw because Robert Whitaker won most of the exchanges, but last two rounds, Yoel Romero rocked him bad. I mean, just like Yoel Romero gets tired uh, within the, uh, you know, within three rounds, he's like usually gassed, but he's still dangerous. He lands one of those big shots on you, you're going down. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how how tired he is, but that's what happened. Yoel Romero was tired and couldn't follow up on uh, him knocking down Robert Whitaker, and Robert Whitaker survived the last two rounds and uh, won by split decision. Good fight, really good fight. But unfortunately, there were no knockouts that night. Uh, at least uh, the fights I did see. I just saw the main card. Uh, but the UFC is known for some pretty scary knockouts. I've seen a few myself. Uh, I will say the scariest one I've probably ever seen is uh, Uriah Hall knocking out uh, Adam Shella. One of the most beautiful kicks I've ever seen delivered. It's a spinning hook kick right to the jaw. Hmm. Adam goes down. That, like, 
You know when people hit the ground knocked out and they don't move? Like, they're, like, knocked stiff? That's kind of how this one was. Like, Adam goes down and he's, like, out for, like, a solid two minutes. But, anyway, uh, this is uh, The Ultimate Fighter, Scariest Knockouts, uh, Part 1. Here we go. Middleweights, Kid Lion, Mike Swift, whose only mixed martial arts loss is to Chris Lehman against Alex Schoenauer, Mike Swift. And Alex Schoenauer. Swick predicts an early knockout. We will see if they come out of sluggish. What wild, wild punch. See Swick going quick. Swick, 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 the left and then the right. Boom. Right there the on the right chin. Right Perfect there. shot. Hurt, and that one drops him. And the other oh, he goes stiff right the there. Back. Jesus. He's stiff as a board. Nice hands. And that's it. Bang. That's the final right there. Right on the jaw. Right there is what got him. You know what? That's, that's very impressive. Well, he lost in the show to his best friend and roommate, Stephen Bonner. Josh Berkman was a winner, but in victory, his dreams and his arm were shattered. Tonight, another shot against a young up-and-comer who has already defeated some very dangerous UFC veteran. Out of Minneapolis, set to take on Josh Berkman. 170-pound division. Oh. Down nice oh, jeez. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he's... Oh, damn, dude. Knocked stiff. That was ugly. Just opened up a nasty cut over Sam Morgan's face. Let's take a look at the replay. I mean, that was lethal. Oh and man! Fast. Watch this. Bang! See that? Look, Slams. Sam goes relaxed. Look at his eye. He's out oh. already. He was out already. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have stopped, I'd have stopped it with the first in. elbow, man. If I were the, the guy there, Mario Yamasaki, I'd have been like right on top of that. Come on, let's do it. Come on. Oh, I've seen this one. Oh, there. Uh, oh wait, no, no, no. no. Come on, buddy. I thought I thought that was going to be the up kick. Oh Jesus! He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. Jesus, dude. Look for a head kick. Gonna set up with a jab, and it'll come. I guarantee it'll come. The head kick. The head kick. The head kick. Knee right to the ear. Who won? He did. He won? Yeah, he got caught with a kick. Go, go, go back to the house! The 24-year-old Pete Sell taking on... Oh, this one. Dude, this is one of the craziest finishes I have ever seen in a fight. Like, I told someone about this, they didn't believe me, and then I showed them this video. Check this out. Since the Ultimate Fighter for the comeback show, he said there's just oh. a different feeling of confidence. Although the early confidence shown by, uh, excuse me, by Cell. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look at that. And bring the hands right back Ooh. up. And Scott Smith is throwing some bombs, man. Scott is uh, throwing wilder punches. Peter, these guys are crazy. But this is not the end of the fight. This is the end of the round. I mean, look at these guys. They're laughing and smiling. Well, they're fight. Well, they're bros, man. I mean. They're in there fighting, and it's just like, it, like I've ran into people who are like that, man. They just love to fight. They love to fight. Oh, there it is. Boom! I told someone about this, and he didn't believe me. I showed him this, and he was just like, you got to be kidding me. Man. Right? Uh, that's a liver shot, too. He was done. And then, wham! <laughs> Jesus. Oh. That liver shot, dude. Li and Scott Smith is still down on the ground. The camo, the camo guy, he is still down on the ground. He can't, like, he, like, he was hurt worse than Pete Sell. It's just Pete Sell got knocked out. Man. I told, oh, is this the one where, oh, oh, this one, this one's bad. This one, this one hurts me. Because I saw, because I saw this happen to somebody, uh, something very similar to this. Oh, 
And No. Gray Maynard knocked himself out. The guy who did the the guy who slammed him, he knocked himself out. His, his head hit the his head hit the mat and he's out. Gray hurt himself throwing him to the ground. Gray is hurt. Gray might be out too. Gray's up now. He knocked himself out with that takedown. But it's so I saw that I saw something like that happen in wrestling. Oh yeah, it's guy not. guy had a double leg. Guy had his hand his arm wrapped around. Contest. Slammed it slammed his head into the ground and, got, and was like woozy for like the next few minutes. Now watch this. You're out. Watch this. He he is done. But so are you. You're unconscious. Look at you roll over. You're completely unconscious. Your eyes. I understand, but your eyes are rolled back. And Gray was mad because he thought he'd won the fight, but. He tapped. I thought it was over. I rolled over. Of course, I'm a little tired. I roll over. A little tired? You're out cold, dude. He's looking stubble around. What are you doing? Looking at his dong right there? Yeah, he's... he's yeah, he's stubble. done. He's out. Man. I don't get that. You see... Okay. So... <laughs> so, you see... Some stuff like that, dude. Like, like the Pete Cell and uh, Scott Smith one... When I was watching, I used to watch the the Ultimate Fighter for like the first uh, five or six seasons religiously. Every time a new episode would come out, I'd I'd be watching. And uh, honestly, when that Scott Smith and Pete Sell one happened, I jumped out of my seat and I was just like, "You gotta be kidding me! No way! No way!" And I've seen some pretty scary ones, like uh, like like I, I told you about the one with Uriah Hall. I think they're gonna show that one. In another one of these, if we continue these, if you all want us to continue these, let us know uh, in the comments down below. But um, you uh, have you seen any like knockouts that just like made you go whoa, like something bad happening to somebody? I mean, if you don't want to talk about, it, you don't have to. But oh, like in real life? No, yeah. I mean, I've seen people knocked out, but it's nothing. I mean, like, uh, what's one knockout that you that surprised you? I mean, did like. Uh, like a strike or something that that, like in real life or yeah, I, I don't want you. Well, no, no, no. Like in real life, like something you've witnessed personally. I mean, I've only seen one guy really get knocked out, and it was just a little punch. I mean, and the dude was out on his feet, stumbling around, instant migraine. I mean, oh Jesus. Uh, it, the, I there was one I saw. It was at a it was at a party, uh, party I went to. Um, you see, there's different levels of drunk. There's, there's, uh, there's party drunk, which is like you know you're buzzing, you got one beer in your system, and you're you're feeling good. There's, uh, <laughs> there's bar stool drunk, meaning that you need to be sitting down for a little bit, and then you know get your bearings, and you'll be okay. There's stumbling drunk, which is pretty much your foo bar, and you need someone to drive you home. And then there's white trash drunk, which I will say this. Given the area I'm from, very, very prominent, very prevalent. This guy was drunk and almost passed out on the couch. And he was sitting next to somebody talking. And I don't know what was said, but the guy who was sitting there talking to the other guy who was almost passed out stands up, rips his shirt off, like, like takes his shirt off. Like he had a he had a tank top underneath. And he's just like, motherfucker! And just like, just starts like, like, hitting the guy in the face as hard as he can and the one guy who's drunk like almost passed out he's just like oh dude what what the hell man what the hell and like my buddy my buddy Strode uh, Chris Strouth comes over and pretty much like rips the guy off of him and like pushes him outside and you know points at him like you know get the fuck home dude I mean get down the, get to walking get down the road now and uh comes back inside and I don't even know what the hell was said just just all I know is that all I know is that this guy got got trashed and then just got the crap beat out of him for what appeared to be no reason. And he's like, he gets up and he's like, he's like, let me go talk to him, man. Let me go talk to him. And he goes outside and he's like, the guy just won't leave. He's standing at the entryway at the at the fence, and he comes up and a guy and the guy who's drunk, he's like, come here, man. Let's just talk about this. Come on. Guy walks up, pow. Right hook to the jaw. Guy goes limp. Goes 
face first into the ground, and all of a sudden, here comes Strogue. Uh, I call my buddy Chris Strouth Strogue. I mean, that's that's what he that's what everyone called him. Strogue comes up behind him and you know gets the guy in a rear naked choke and just just like ties him up on the ground. He's like, "Are you gonna calm the hell down?" He's like, "He's like, you don't understand, dude. You don't know what he said about me." And I'm like, "I'm like, what the hell? What did he say?" And and I never found out what the hell was said because honestly, dude was probably so drunk he just imagined it. I don't know. I really don't know. White trash drunk is weird, dude. I mean, it's it's it it can get nasty really fast. Especially when you got a bunch of hot-headed, you know, a bunch of hotheads, which he definitely was. I mean, he's very, he was very hot-blooded. He was a very hot-blooded person. But I myself, like, I, you know, I've had my fair share of fights, and I've never, like, been, like, fully knocked out in a fight. But I've had the shit kicked out of me to the point of where I, I can't even, like, like, there was really nothing I can do. I was pretty much just, like, beaten to, like, the point of, like, I... I, I I couldn't do anything. Uh, like it, it was that one time I told you where those guys dragged me over the back of that couch and just like laid the stomping to me. Have I told you about that? Um, maybe. I I was at a party and I was and you know I was buzzing a little bit and my buddy Froggy brought out a guitar and wanted me to play guitar and uh, these girls were gathered around me and you know we were all singing a song and then all of a sudden I get dragged over the back of the couch and like three or four dudes start laying start laying the uh, laying the leather to me and just like stomping on me and everything and I'm like why what the, I, I well apparently I was serenading their girlfriends and they were drunk and thought that I was trying to trying to go to bed with them I, I don't know what dude. The, what kind of parties were these like <laughs> dude uh, dude hardcore I, dude hardcore Appalachian mountain rednecks that's what I'm talking about I mean I don't go I went to maybe like two parties like back in high school. I, I don't drink and I've never seen like anybody get to a brawl. I don't think I would go to parties if like that was a regular thing. It it was a regular thing. I mean, uh, out of all the parties I went to at Froggy's, which was like, gosh, I think like, f- like 30, 40 times throughout the few years I was around him. Um, I, I, there was only like two or three fights, but one of them, I just pissed off like the wrong dudes and they just, and they just, commits to kicking the shit out of me and that's not normal well-adjusted human behavior like you're right are those guys in jail now (laughs) i don't know i hope i well if they aren't i mean honestly i'll take them on -on one-on-one if they still got a problem with me i mean i don't know if they still if they watch this channel or not oh dear but anyway uh i i'll never forget because uh the guy had like two of the guys were holding me up and like i could hear the one guy talking like it was like my he- my ears were ringing and my head was like pulsing, and I couldn't hear pretty much what the guy was saying. And I had and like my lip got busted open like right down here really bad, and um, I had blood in my mouth. And like he gra- like the guy like like grabs me like right here like get like grabs my shirt and like pulls it up like this like making me look up at him. And I had an it I had a uh, the blood that was going down my throat got you know got caught up and i coughed and i spat blood in his face on accident i mean he deserved it no i know a lot more than i know well he took that as a sign of disrespect and just laid into me a few more times and then all of a sudden like they got me on the ground again and like they're about like they're commencing to kick you know still kicking me and everything and then all of a sudden i hear pow pow and here comes froggy uh, Froggy, Miller, and Irish, they all come charging down the, you know, because the, I think they heard what was happening, and they heard it was me who was getting the shit kicked out of me, and they decided to break it up and get me out of there and everything, and, you know, they told the guys to leave. Irish was just want Irish was wanting to kill him. Like, that's one thing I'll say about Irish. He was always, like, ready to, ready to hurt I mean, somebody. it sounds like these guys were not well adjusted. They probably, the world probably would have been better place without people like that in it. Yeah, well, I don't, I, I didn't want to kill him or anything like that, but, but Miller, Miller was a big dude. Miller worked like Miller and Miller and I worked out together, but he'd been like, like he was a gym rat. He was just like, he always went to the gym. Like he was just like jacked, like, but he was a nice guy too. Froggy was in pretty good shape. He was more of a, uh, like he was more of a party guy than a, than a fighter, but he, he was down with you. If he, if you were down with him, he'd like, he'd back you to the moon and he'd back you to the moon. But 
um, when that happened, like Froggy, like had his like had his uh, forty that his dad got him, and was like, fired it into the air twice and told him to bug the you know bug out or else bug out or else and the cop and like he's like he's like you want me to call the cops? I'll hold you here all night, man. Make sure the cops come up here and get you. And then pretty much I like they took me inside. They called up Shauna, who was who was my girl at the time, and uh, she came up, and she stayed with me the rest of the night. She made sure I was okay, and uh, we went to we went to the hospital the next day and uh, bruised my ribs really bad. Thankfully, none of them got broken, but it hurt to it hurt to breathe for the next few days, and also I couldn't laugh because, <laughs> oh, God, it hurt to laugh. Uh, but, yeah, that was not fun. I don't want to go through that again. I, I just don't like fighting, guys, but... Apparently, where I'm a big guy, and apparently, like, it's it's a common thing to, like, want to fight big guys, like, to prove yourself. Like, it's like, I'm insecure about myself. Hey, that big guy over there looks vulnerable. I'm going to smack him in the face. I mean, that's apparently a thing. I don't know. But, <laughs> anyway, uh, this was uh, Scariest UFC Knockouts uh, Part 1. Uh, if you liked what you saw here, link in the description down below to the original video. If you want to see us uh, react to more of this, uh, feel free to let us know. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. Micah. We'll see you later, everyone. Peace.